Me quedan a pon por señor. Uh, Acabo si Roy Moy, as uh, Gigo uh, kindly introduced earlier. Uh, I'm originally from England, but now I'm taking my graduate studies at UP Dillon um, in political science, which I always find quite interesting um, because, as politics, because at immigration they always ask, uh, they always tell me as a foreigner you're not al uh, allowed to get involved in politics, you're not allowed to discuss politics. So what are you doing here? Uh, I'm studying. What are you studying? Uh, politics. <laughs> so um, it's, uh, it's always an interesting one. Um, and so, uh, originally from England, I was uh, a goalkeeper at the University of York during my bachelor's. Uh, but what brought me to the Philippines was originally working in a foundation uh, called ASCF, uh, the Asian Students Christian Foundation. Uh, I was there for three months, both times I was there. And um, I just wanted to come back. I just really enjoyed the work. It was great work. And obviously, it's very meaningful. Uh, and so when football became an opportunity, I, I just grabbed it. It was like, I'd, all right, football, it's, it's just a perfect fit. And, um, and so in this country, uh, the opportunity for football really came about with the Ascals, the Philippine men's national football team. Um, when they started to win uh, last year in the Suzuki Cup, they reached the semi-finals of the Suzuki Cup. They went on to qualify uh, for the Challenge Cup final stages, while also qualifying for the first time in their history for the second round of the, of the World Cup qualification for 2014. Uh, from here, a lot of the kids in the areas that uh, previously I worked in, uh, they started to know about the Ascals and they started to become interested in football. And so due to those rises, due to working in Payatas, uh, we decided to start a football team in Payatas. <laughs> Obviously there is no football field, so we train on a bar in the Barangay basketball court, as you can uh, see here. Most of the kids play in their slippers and their chinelas, and uh, at the first session we had almost 100 kids turn up. Uh, as the only coach, that was incredibly impractical, but it was uh, a great encouragement for the interest that there were so many kids wanting to be involved. Uh, and so each week now, there are roughly 30 to 40 kids at Payatas, while in Casiglahan also, in Montalban, there are a further 20 to 30 uh, each week. Um, as the only coach most of the time, it can be difficult work, and we train each Saturday. Um, I'm actually missing training this week in order to, to speak to you all, so it's a, a bittersweet moment, I guess, in that sense. Um, but the, the most important thing is that kids really enjoy it, that they have so much fun. Um, obviously a lot of hard work goes into this, and uh, the, originally we started with no equipment. There was basically nothing else except for a few footballs that we had. And so using slippers as cones uh, and the goals, uh, the kids are very creative, uh, and so we were able to get around most of the problems with equipment just simply through that, simply through their creativity more than anything else. Um, and so six months later, we were uh, ready to begin competing uh, elsewhere. Uh, with some support, uh, we've been given uh, cones, been given various different equipment to help us with the training. This is James Rochlitz. He's one of the newer Ascals. He's one of the younger Ascals who came to visit and to coach uh, once. These two kids, this is Ricardo on the right and Ricky on the left. Uh, this is the parental permission forms that they got uh, that week because they were two included in the tournament um, that are uh, Payatas FC's first uh, tournament. And so after six months of training, we went to the tournament again with uh, some help. On the left here is Lexton Moy and Nate Berkey, again, their new Ascals, um, who played in the last game against Singapore yesterday. Uh, but with some great help, we were able to get the kids some, uh, a fantastic kit here uh, provided by Jeff Yap. Um, we've uh, been graciously given so much in, in that respect, and we, um, many people said we had the best kit there, and thanks to him for that. With, um, with that, uh, in the tournament, we managed to, in the five games, we managed to win three, draw one, and lose one, finishing ninth out of the 33 teams. For a team that had been together about six months, it wasn't too bad, considering. I mean, we've been playing uh, six months, a lot of their kids were older, been playing for a few years, so I was really proud of them. It was a great start to the football team. Um, this is our captain, Jay. Uh, he's uh, one of the defenders, and the kids show real spirit, real heart when playing. 
and uh, <laughs> Stephen on the floor here. This is the game where he learned he could actually slide tackle on uh, <laughs> on the basketball courts. Of course, uh, on concrete they can't slide tackle. They'd, they'd ruin the legs. But through the entire game, he decided just to slide in with every challenge. <laughs> it was. It, I couldn't stop laughing the entire time. <laughs> uh, there was no coaching going on in that game because I was just in, her in, uh, in hysterics at the side of the pitch here. Um, even when it was, uh, he was just stood there and the defender was there, he just decided to slide in <laughs> at every opportunity. It was <laughs> um, but but he, had, he had real fun and they, they all did really well in the tournament. Um, but the important aspect for, for these kids, the reason that they were given this help in a sense, the reason that they were so hardworking and creative to, to solve the challenges, was really the, the places that they live. Coming from Payatas, um, a barangay that's home to the biggest rubbish dump site in Manila, tens of thousands of people live on the outskirts scavenging. Of course, I'm sure we all know some statistics uh, about that. Um, and how maybe the daily wage for a scavenger would be maybe 200 pesos for the family. Of course, that's uh, difficult to, to sustain a family on, and so they have to be very hardworking and creative to, to get around those financial issues. They've taught me a lot um, along that side, along, uh, alongside um, me helping with the coaching, for example. They, they for when my slippers broke, they showed me how to fix them. <laughs> and just as a simple example of how they can show the way that things on that the trash, the things we throw away, can be reused, can be recycled, and the way that they can re remake them into something new is is truly incredible. Um, the close-up of the rubbish dump really shows the, that it's just literally a mountain of rubbish. On the right here is uh, Craig Burrows, who directs the ASCF charity, the one that I was uh, volunteering with to begin with. Um, this is after Undoy. It's showing how high the waters rose after Undoy in that area. And um, a lot of the time, the houses are just simply made of the trash of the recycled material. It's difficult to think that a home would be made of such impermanent structures, to think it would be made of such materials in itself. Um, but this is home to uh, three girls and their two parents um, here. On the left, the far left, uh, this girl's called Jaira. She's under the educational sponsorship of our sister charity, ASCF. My parents actually sponsor her education, and she's one of the most intelligent, uh, I think she's 11 now, one of the most intelligent 11-year-olds that I've ever known. She, her grades are above 90% each time, and she's always been top of a class. The issue with Bayatas in that sense is not that they're not intelligent enough, not creative enough, or hardworking. They're, they're more hardworking, creative than many of the people I know in England. The, the issue is the opportunity. Um, but they find many creative and innovative ways uh, to have fun, to, to be kids, to simply be kids. I thought this was really cute. This kid just finds a frog and decides it's his pet now. And it's, it's just really cute, the different ways that people have of dealing with this and the innovative, innovative solutions uh, to the problems. One story uh, particularly is of uh, one of the girls. She's the vice captain of the girls' team. Uh, she's called Crystal. She's in the children's home run by our sister charity. Uh, she's 14 years old now uh, and stays in the children's home. Uh, but she's one of the most skillful girls in, in the football team. Uh, and she joined us in uh, a previous tournament in the girls' team. Um, however, her story begins when she was born in a cemetery. She was born... Um, to uh, parents who lived in the cemetery, to a community whose home was the cemetery itself. Um, at four years old, uh, here she is on the left, uh, she was uh, sleeping in the grave and a petrol bomb was thrown over the wall and it landed in the grave she was sleeping on. Um, her back got all burnt down the sides and she was rushed to hospital and this was the event that really led her to come into the children's home. Uh, she's had an incredible story so far and she's only 14 years old. But now she has the opportunity to go from that. And it's her reaction to the past. It's her reaction to what happened that impresses me most. Back in England, perhaps, uh, a child would be in, in counselling for life for something like this. There's a real victim culture within that. They, it was almost uh, as if you're supposed to feel like a victim. But for her, it's more about empowerment. She sees that she can change her life, that she can help other people in those situations. And that's what's most impressive for me. I wanted to make a captain of the girls' team, but uh, she, uh, she didn't want to be. 
at first. Uh, she, uh, she decided that someone else uh, should take that at first, but she, uh, she now wants to be a social worker because of the help given, because of the way that uh, she's received that help and that opportunity, and how she's turned that into her own success. And so football feeds into this. Football feeds into the culture of that. Football in itself won't change a, a child's life. Football in itself, only a few children will be able to go on professionally. Only a few children will be able to become coaches. Only a few of them will be able to really earn a salary out of that. And the growing football culture in the Philippines will help in that. It's growing massively now uh, with the UFL, the domestic league, being televised on um, TV5 now. And there are great opportunities within that in the future, but the most important aspect of this is the potential, the opportunities, and the platform it creates. In England, the fair play campaigns and the kick racism out of football campaigns really change the societal values there. In the Philippines too, football's now providing a platform for that social change. Every aspect of art, every aspect of culture is about that. It's about what change we can make by expressing ourselves. And football is one way that these kids can express the confidence. Football provides a level playing field for the children where it doesn't matter where they were born, it doesn't matter who their parents are, and it doesn't matter how much money they have. If they have the skill, the determination and the hard work, they can succeed and they can win. And Payatas FC has, uh, have won three out of their first five games, only losing one of those games. If we'd uh, won that game, we lost and I'm blaming it on the rain as the manager, um, then we would have been in the final in the top two teams of our first tournament. And so the kids themselves are putting the hard work, the creativity into that. The, sh the kids are, are showing that they can win despite what happened in their lives, despite the place they live, despite all of uh, their problems and their scenarios. They can be proud of their achievements. Crystal said uh, of football, um, she likes to play football because it helps forget the bad things in her life. And for people like Crystal, for people like the kids in our team, it's about expressing themselves, and football provides that place. The best thing I did for the kids, really, was just to give them the ball. They expressed themselves after that, and they did the hard work after that. This is uh, the first chapter of the story, and someday I uh, hope to come back and tell you the rest of that. Thank you very much for listening.